Open up your mouth and blast in the Holy Ghost. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your voice. We reverence you. We adore you. We give the glory. We give the hope.
that you will teach us, open our eyes to the truths that will set us free in Jesus' name. Blessed be your holy name, in Jesus' name we pray. All right, uh, so continuing in the theme for the month, uh, talking about Occupy Till I Come, We'll be taking our texts from Luke 19, verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Um, The Greek word that is interpreted occupy 
is Ashlume. And it means to occupy yourself, concern yourself, dwell, get busy, do business. Some other form of the word occupy means to do a live, inhabit, recite, populate. Another one means to possess, hold, own, have, and master. So basically, what the servants were being told was to dominate. Because for you to master something, you have to dominate in that realm. Then we look at it from the military standpoint. Military occupation is, according to the Webster's, Miriam Webster's dictionary, it says, control and possession of hostile territory that enables an invading nation to establish military government against an enemy or martial law against rebels or insurrectionists in its own territory. So we look at it from this angle. When the Romans occupied Jerusalem and Israel at the time they did during the time of Jesus Christ, one of the things they did was this, or rather, they were in control of all the affairs of the land. They had a say, the final say in all the affairs of the land. They were in charge of government of the land. They were in charge of the government of the land. They collected taxes, regulated how the people behaved, and subdued or suppressed any insurrection or disobedience. You know, at that time, they had people that uh, the Jews used to call the zealots that uh, used to fight the, the Roman government. Uh, actually, one of those zealots later became um, the disciple of Jesus Christ. His name was Simon, apart from Simon Peter. Yet, in all of that, the Romans had a firm grip on the government of the day. They kept law and order. And they did that by any means necessary. Praise the Lord. So, when we tie these two, two situations together, we find that when Jesus talks about us occupying till he comes, he's asking us to do business. Influence how things are done in and around our spheres of influence. Make sure that the things that happen around are how heaven wants them to happen. You know, like that scripture that says, uh, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, whatsoever you lose on earth is lose in heaven. Basically what he's saying is whatsoever you allow on earth should be what is allowed in heaven and whatsoever you disallow on earth should be what is disallowed in heaven. So he's simply saying you should make sure that 
everything in around you conforms to how God's life is. Praise the Lord. So you look at it this way. When the master that was uh, talked about in Luke chapter 9, 19 rather, verse 13, he gave them a deposit, some money for them to start trading with. When Jesus was, and he told them, do business with this when I, until I come back. When Jesus was living, what did he give us? He gave us the Holy Spirit. He told the disciples then, he told them to tarry in Jerusalem until be endued with power from on high. As chapter 2, he says, uh, um, Say you shall be. Uh, it comes from chapter one, from verse eight. It says, uh, "You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth." So, primary business. is witnessing the life of Christ. And like we said, the deposit he gave us is the Holy Spirit. You can see that in Ephesians 1, 14, where he talks about that. This deposit of the Holy Spirit is the assurance that the inheritance we are promised, we will receive it. And what is the Holy Spirit supposed to help us do? The Holy Spirit is to help us live the life of Christ here on earth. How did Christ live his life? He talked about being about the father's business. And it's by being about the father's business that we begin to do exactly what he asks us to do, occupying till he comes. It's by being about the father's business that we will be able to bring his influence across the globe. May God help us in Jesus' name. So the deposits that we are given, the deposit of the Holy Spirit that we are given, is for us to do the Father's business. If you remember vividly, if you read the remaining part of that chapter, you will see where he was asking when he came back, when the master came back and was asking for what the people had done with the money he gave them. One brother did nothing with his own. He kept it. It goes to show that even if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, except you cooperate with him to do the Father's business, he will not force you to do it. Praise the Lord. Except you cooperate with him to do the Father's business, he will not force you to do it.
in each and every one of us is the desire to be in charge and in control of the situations and circumstances around us. That desire can be brought to life if we will cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Because let's begin to understand that the earth as it is, the creation of the earth, the world, was by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Then verse 2, uh, he says, And the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the deep. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. This light was brought about by the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was going to be born, when Mary was asking, how can this thing be possible, seeing that I know no man? What did the angel say? He said, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, and that which will be conceived of you shall be called the Son of the Most High. When Jesus passed, before he passed, he talked about uh, that he will send the comforter. In John, I think John 14 or 15, he talks about that he will send the comforter. He said he will not leave us helpless. He will not leave us uh, like orphans. He will send the Holy Spirit, the one who is like him. He said he will lead us into all truth. He will remind us of the things he said and he will teach us new things that we need to learn. When the Holy Spirit had not yet come, the disciples were hiding. So much so that in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came, 120 of them were basically hiding in the upper room so that they don't get killed by the Jews. Peter, who a few days before less than 20 days before. Okay. Less than uh, 60 days before, less than two months before, had denied knowing Jesus. When the Holy Spirit came, a boldness came over him that made him Comfort, or rather stand without fear and deliver the gospel. First time, 3,000 people. Second time, 5,000 people. This same Holy Spirit is who we have. And if we will cooperate with him. He will help us fulfill the mandate to dominate our sphere of influence. The Bible says that the knowledge of God will fill the whole earth as the waters 
cover the sea. That is what we are called to do. Many a time, a lot of us are scared to preach the gospel because either that we are afraid of ridicule or we are afraid that um, we might meet with violence or persecution. But if we will cooperate with the Holy Spirit, we'll find that that will no longer be an issue. So, my call to all of us today is that we begin to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in order to achieve the dominion mandate of spreading the gospel and dominating until Jesus comes. And God will help us as we do so in Jesus' name. With that, we come to the end of this talk and we'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for helping us this far. We ask that this which you have taught us today that you help us cooperate with the Holy Spirit to achieve your purposes and plans for the kingdom here on earth. We ask in Jesus' name. Dear Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. Help us achieve all that the Lord wants us to achieve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. So that will be all. See you next week. Thanks for watching today's episode of our special Digging Deep. For questioning on any of our Bible study topics, kindly send a message to us. WhatsApp only or send a mail to RCCG Temple of God Parish at gmail.com.